Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fragrant Bunker. You guys, my top 10 tuberose fragrances. I've done a video like this with this selection over a year ago, but the taste buds evolve, the olfactive senses evolve. You learn, as you learn, you grow, and as you grow, you evolve. And I've updated my list and it's really time to kind of step it up a notch and tuberose has been becoming my, my favorite white floral, really. So I'm just obsessed with it and I keep researching and experiencing and learning more about it and finding out more and more gems that enshrine the tuberose within them. So let's get to it. First, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already here on YouTube. You can also join me on Patreon. Super Deco Ball spelled together on Patreon for extra perks. Thank you to all my members and patrons who have already pledged and subscribed. Um, I live stream every Saturday on my main Super Deco channel. And you're all invited to join me. That's where I film all these videos in front of a live virtual audience. You know, you're, you're all invited to join me and partake in the live chat. Speaking of, let's cue in my co-chators. Hello, everybody. Welcome, my dears. Now. Listen, uh, okay, we're going, we're doing that thing. All right, I'll just let that crazy. <laughs> yes, we have a lot of chats. As we're, as the chats are scrolling and updating, I'm going to get to the first perfume. And the first perfume, uh, we're going to go in a chronological order, actually. Tuberose as evolution throughout time. So I have set them all in a chronological order. And we're going on a journey through time and tuberose. Speaking of the journey, I'm wearing my journey merch. <laughs> Updated for Halloween, but you could wear it all year round. And check out my merch at www.superdacob.com. You can also get it. You can also get the, the journey merch uh, part of it on Amazon as well, if it's available in the Amazon in your country. Now, the journey through tuberose. Well, let's begin with the 20s. Number 22 uh, is the oldest tuberose in my selection. And it is the Eau de Toilette, but I also love, this is the Eau de Toilette. It has aged very well. As you can see, it's turned this gorgeous gold ambery color. It's not this color when you buy it new. It changes with time. It's also the vanilla in here that darkens. I love the Eau de Toilette, of course, which is not discontinued, but I also love the Eau de Parfum, which you can still purchase, and I also love the Pure Perfume, which you can also still purchase. I have all three concentrations, and I love all three, but this is the Eau de Toilette, and what a wonderful, precious tuberose. It's a, it's a friendly, sunny tuberose. This is, I always say number 22 is the most giving of all Chanel perfumes in terms of emotions. This one, this is why also a lot of people love to wear it for weddings. Um, it's just a sunny, solar, friendly perfume. And not every Chanel perfume is like that. So, you know, Chanel number no. 19, for example, is, is famous for being such a cold-blooded, detached Chipra. Well, number 22 is the most giving of Chanel perfumes. It is friendly, enjoyable, sunny, and beautiful. So we begin our tuberose journey with the Chanel fragrance from 1922. Next stop, well, we went through, you know, the problems of the 30s in the world, and then we end the problems in 1945, and we have a chance to start <clears throat> being free again. So in 1948, another majestic tuberose sees the light of day. In 1948, we have the release of Fraca from the Robert Piguet range. The perfumer is Germaine Cellier, or Germaine, <laughs> Germaine. <laughs> Fraca is a mythological creature. This is a dark tuberose. This is a scary bubblegummy tuberose. This is a tuberose that I have reviewed on my channel, so you can go check out the review. I, I talk about the Black Dahlia, uh, noir, film noir, thrillers. The bottle kind of already tells you what this is all about. Sure, it has a little pink frame around it, but this tuberose, you don't mess with it. 
This tuberose has a knife and a dagger. But it's a very popular buttery tuberose that has been worn by many, many famous, 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 famous people throughout time. So this one has a very specific place in history. But when it comes to tuberose, this one delivers a more buttery aspect of tuberose. It is full. It is dark. This is not a light version of tuberose, but it is throughout its buttery base it does deliver hopeful inspiration now even though that hopeful inspiration is dark as well it's a majestic tuberose fraca is definitely in the top 10 definitely madonna and isabella blow have worn it says Givenchy. now from the ford it seems as though in the 50s 60s and 70s tuberose was not a big thing there were fragrances with tuberose, of course, but... And then in the 60s, 70s, the Shebra family came along. You don't really do tuberose with Shebra. So we're jumping the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, and we're landing into the 80s. 1985, the majestic release of Poison by Christian Dior. Now, I have the first formula right here, the Eau de Toilette. I also love the Esprit de Parfum. I also love the cologne, the light cologne, and the extrait. But this one holds a special place in my heart. Poison, or Poison, by Christian Dior, the other toilette. Man, oh man. Has there ever been another <laughs> more majestic tuberose in the 80s than this one? I don't think so. This one starts a journey in a different direction. It goes darker. It delivers in the dry down the indolic aspect of the tuberose. It's almost camphorous, but not quite, but it is indolic. This is a special type of tuberose. It is a dark tuberose. It's a tuberose drenched in resins, plum, orris root iris. It's a powdery tuberose, but it's a tuberose that has resins going for it and it has depth and it is almost sticky and dry at the same time <sighs> divine divine it, it manages i'm talking about the original formulation the current formulation is a shadow of its former self it's still better than a ton of other perfumes out there but it doesn't deliver like the og the og is such a complex formula rich expensive to make um, voluptuous, and it 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 rides that thin line between sweet and dry, which it it doesn't ride that line anymore in the current formula because it takes way more high quality ingredients to to deliver that, and the OG formula really delivered it. So if you can manage to get a, a vintage one, get it. Mm. It's divine. Now, Edouard Fléchier is the perfumer behind Poison by Christian Dior, released in 1985. Definitely, definitely worthy of top 10 tuberoses of all time, really. Really. The fourth is also an 80s perfume. It's a baby from the 80s, you guys. And you could call it the smaller sister of Poison. Many, many call it that way, although I do believe it, it deserves its own respectful position in the perfume world. Uh, it has been released in 1987. Jean Guichard is the perfumeur of Lulu by Cacharel. Lulu by Cacharel. This one is divine. Oh, man. Listen, poison is very 80s. But nothing smells of the 80s like Lulu. It's so beautiful. It's a beautiful resinousy, powdery scent. You could say it's a smaller sister of Poison, but it's lighter uh, than Poison. You know, it's it's a tuberose that, that has shoulder pads, um, that has a quirky mid-heel, lambskin leather pumps, 
flashy colors, a bit of red, a bit of blue, you know, the colorways that we have also on the bottle. The little look at this little 80s designed spaceship. You know, a lot of people say, oh, the original was the genie bottle thing. Well, no, the genie bottle is the splash, but this is also the 80s design of this of the perfume. The spray has always been designed like this. The glass was different. It was colored through in blue. Now it's just spray painted in blue because they're saving money. But I love the current formulation of Lulu more than the original, really. They, they've tweaked it. They've made it less spicy. And, oh, it's a dream. Oh, it's such a dream. Such a beautiful tuberose. This is a friendly tuberose, but it's a loud one. It's a, it's a, it's a friendly tuberose that has those huge shoulder pads. Maybe she bleached her hair. Maybe she did a little curl, a little wave. You know, maybe she parties a little bit too much, but she's a friend indeed when you, the friend, are in need. That's Lulu. Wonderful, wonderful tuberose. Definitely worthy of the top 10. Now, the fifth tuberose is also from the 80s. And honey, let me tell you, this one, not only does it have shoulder pads, this one owns the business. This one is the business. This one is the moment. This is the tuberose, you guys. And that would be number one, Intense, by Nicolai Parfumeur Créateur. The perfumer behind Nicolai Fragrances is the owner Patricia de Nicolai, a female perfumer that has not only talent, but knowledge of chemistry. I can tell you, she's the niece of, to the Guerlain family, but she started her own company and she does her own perfumes and I prefer her perfumes to Guerlain's. Sorry, Guerlain, maybe you should have hired the girl. Maybe you should have given her the appointment as artistic director of perfumes at Guerlain instead of Thierry Vassal. All tea, all shade, all pink lemonade. Let's keep it real for a second, okay? Majestic. Now, number one, used to be called number one, and now it's been amped up to number one intense. Came out in 1989. And I want to say thank you to my dear friend, Vel. Go check her out on Instagram. Um, Aldehydes Overdose or Overdose Aldehydes. I'll, I'll I'll link her down below. She doesn't have a YouTube channel, but she's um she's on on Instagram. And Vel gifted me actually uh, a bottle. So Vel, thank you so much for initiating me into the world of Nicolai uh, Parfumeur Créateur. Listen, Patricia de Nicolai developed, and I have the review of this one. So I'm gonna you know. Check out the review of number one intense, and I explain it all in the review. It's a long review, but just in brief, the nature of the tuberose is um, how the flower works. It blooms at night, and it kind of lures you in. Why is the tuberose so famous? Not just because it smells divinely, but also because of the mythological stories that go with tuberose, and one of them being that the ladies of the courts of the kings and queens and kingdoms, but also... You didn't have to be noble to access tuberose. The girls were kept away from tuberose because the tuberose had that intoxicating smell and it was believed that if you would smell tuberose, you would lose your virginity if you were still a virgin. Now, so the flower was not allowed to be smelled by the girls, right? But the flower has a very particular nature of slithering its way miles and miles away from the actual uh, flower itself. So you get to smell it. It's as if it pokes at you from time to time, from a far distance. But if you smell the flower really, really up close, sometimes you just won't smell it at all. You're going to smell it when you're far away from it. It has developed such... It has evolved through time in such a way that the flower has developed so much strength in terms of projection of its smell. And Patricia de Nicolai managed to mimic exactly that behavioral pattern of the tuberose and put it into this perfume. 
So when I sprayed it on the first time, it has, I mean, it has oak moss in here, musks, sandalwood, um, acacia flower. I mean, jasmine. This thing is amazing. This, this perfume is just incredible. It was Patricia's first official perfume, by the way. But the tuberose hits you like one hour in or two hours in, and it just kind of like, you don't smell it on the, you don't smell the tuberose on the, on the spot where you sprayed the perfume. But if you, you know, move your arm away from your nose, from time to time, it's just going to kind of, you're going to inhale a whiff of tuberose, and then it's going to be gone again. And you're going to be looking for it everywhere. And then you're going to be like, where is it? And then before you know it, it's going to hit you again. And that's exactly how the actual flower behaves. So Patricia managed to mimic that in the perfume. It's insane. I mean, hands down, worthy of top 10 tuberoses of all time. And she uses tuberose absolue for this uh, perfume. Also has tuberose, like mid note, base note, even I think top notes. Top notes, maybe not, but it's it's insane. Wonderful perfume. Now we're going to move into the 90s. And uh, we have another little masterpiece by Jean Guichard. And Jean Guichard, who already created Lulu in the 80s. Well, in the 90s, Jean Guichard returns in 1994 with Eden. Eden by Cacharel. What can I tell you? What a masterpiece. I love this perfume so much. I even have I even have the Factice bottle, darlings, in, in this gorgeous green Eden glass. You see how it also how the glass used to be all mixed, blended, and poured into this shape with all these colors, this kind of marbly effect. Now they went a little bit cheap on us. They just spray painted in green. But doesn't matter. Current formulation is still amazing. Less syrupy than the OG formula. However, this is a tuberose that is rotting. It is so ripe with all the fruits that are in this Eden, in this Garden of Eden. Uh, patchouli is in there as well. But a lot of fruits and, and a lot of florals and flowers, including the tuberose. And the tuberose in this Garden of Eden has reached its ripest point. And it, it's, it's just about to go off. Oh my God, this perfume is is amazing. I mean, I've never smelled something like it before in my life. Uh, and no other perfume comes close. But the bottle is just divine. This is the Splash bottle, by the way. Has that kind of shape of a leaf from the Garden of Eden, right? Some people call this a nipple. But the spray bottle always had this shape. It, this is a 30 mil. There's also 50 mil. They used to have a 75 mil and a 100 mil. Um... But this is a moist, wet tuberose. It's a little bit more resinous in the OG formula. The current formula is a little bit more metallic. You know, they, they've cheapened out on some ingredients here. But it's, oh, it's so deep and intense. And, I, and people say it's, it's too strong for summer. And I say, no, this is exactly the perfume you should wear in summer. And I always wear it just behind my knee. If I wear like shorts, uh, you need that. It's so intense and powerful and it blooms in the air. Again, like a tuberose would, you know, distance is needed. And if I spray it behind the knee on my pulse point and then I get wafts of it, kind of it climbs, it slithers up my, my body and it goes into my nose from time to time. And it is most beautiful when it's smelled at a distance because it has the time to, to blossom and bloom and mature in the air. The molecules settle in just right if they're far away from from the nose so like knee distance is just the right amount to the nose if you spray it right here a neck close to the nose it's going to overpower you you need to respect this one give it the distance it's like a cat it comes to you when it wants to come to you if you're going to push it next to you but it's not in the mood to be next to you you're going to get a headache love this one and i love how dangerous it is you got to know how to dose it Gorgeous. Definitely top 10 uh, tuberoses of all time for me. Number seven, another 90s masterpiece of a tuberose. And when I say masterpiece, I mean, this thing is so conceptual that, I mean, it, it breaks all logic and patterns. And that would be, I have the new 
version of the, I have the new bottle. It comes in, it didn't always come in this bottle, but it's the skyscraper dedicated to the 20s shaped bottle Tubereuse Criminel by Serge Luton, released in 1999. The perfumer, the nose behind this one is Christopher Sheldrake. This is a beautiful bottle, 100 ml bottle. This one you can't really wear on a daily basis. It's that intense. But this tuberose, it's, it's called criminal tuberose for a reason because he managed to extract the indoles of the tuberose in such a pure way that it smells camphorous. It's like a camphorous deep smell. Now, 1999, 1985 is poison. Poison has that same dry down, that camphor, very light in the case of poison. It doesn't go there so extreme. But that same indolic tuberose dry down that's in poison is here as well, except this one being so niche and conceptual, this one delivers it amped to the nth degree. So you get this almost like um, gasoline, camphorous gasoline tuberose smell. It is criminal. It's a killer. Highly conceptual. You have to know how to wear this one because this one can wear you easily if you don't know how to tame it. Um, but it deserves the place in the top 10 tuberoses of all time because it delivers the most extreme indolic facet of the tuberose, which is that camphorous gasoline smell of the tuberose. And it's amped to the nth degree. So Tuberose Criminel by Serge Luton, conceptual tuberose that you have to know how and when to wear. <laughs> now, as if that weren't enough and you're already going like, wow. Listen, number eight, we're, we've, we're abandoning the 90s and we're going into the 2000s. And in the year 2000, something magical happens. Guerlain releases Maura. Yeah, call it Mahora, but it's Maura. I mean, in French, I guess you would say Maura. From the island of Mayotte. This beautiful perfume and bottle, there you have the name of it in the back, M-A-H-O-R-A, -A, um, was released in the year 2000. And Jean-Paul Guerlain is the nose behind this one. You have to turn the bottle to release the sprayer, and then you can spray the perfume. This tuberose. Mm -mm. nightmares are made of this um it it is it is a flower that he manages to poetically portray as something that blossoms in the middle of the desert with no water and there's a lot of almond like almost as if it was poured over with almond milk but crushed almonds with that furry skin you know usually you put you drench almonds in water then you can peel them of that fur furry skin that it's on top of them well this one has the fluffy skin as well in there so it screeches it scratches it's a it's a perfume designed by a person that is aware of their mortality a, a person that is aware that they're getting older that they're about to die they are abandoning life but they're hopeful for the future it is, um, it's that deep. Uh, it, it's also, it, it's it's a scary perfume. It, it's like a nightmare, but in the best, it's the, it's the best nightmare. <laughs> Ma Maura um, is just, it's 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 like being aware of death pending doom and then planting that seed the flower is the seed for future generations to come like the the perfume not the flower is the seed the perfume is the seed symbolically speaking that um Guerlain planted into the earth or gave us in form of this perfume to say 
you know, you can almost cheat death by how mystical this smell is. Um, it's full of tropical fruits and dense, milky, almondy vibes. But then the tuberose reigns supreme above it all. And it is a nightmarish landscape of of epic proportions this thing is insane the tuberose in here tells a story <laughs> let me tell you i mean and also hands down hands down deserves to be in the top 10 tuberoses of all time however it had a very short life it's been discontinued shortly after its release i guess it was not right for its time because you know the early 2000s y2k era you know, Chanel released their Coco Mademoiselle. You know, it was just the sweet Chuli era. This one didn't stand a chance. This thing is old school. This thing has 60s, 70s vibes in it. But without being a Shebra, because it's floral and fruity, it would have been way ahead of its time in the 70s. But it it felt dated in the 2000s. So it was an unlucky perfume. And I understand, like, no matter when you would release this fragrance, it would never feel right. Why? Because it's it's scary. It it, it it's it, it's a nightmarish vision. People can't handle it. I don't think I I think even now it's way ahead of its time. It's it's still not the right time for this perfume. And and um it's a highly conceptual fragrance that requires really, really a lot of knowledge and also a lot of abandoning yourself to it in order to really love it. So the bottle is also genius. Definitely worthy of the top 10 tuberoses of all time. Maura, and I want to thank my dear friend Jesus, who is in the chats. There he is for letting me know about this perfume. So thank you, thank you so much. Because without Jesus, I wouldn't have um, wouldn't have discovered this one. Well, maybe not in this lifetime. <laughs> but anyway, also Jesus has a wonderful YouTube channel. You should go check it out. Hold a toilet. I'm gonna post the link down below. Number nine. We're in the two thousands now. Number nine was released in two thousand and five. And that one is none other than Carnal Flower by Dominique Ropion for Frédéric Mal perfumes. 2005 is the release date. Ugh. This tuberose is so green. And yet, what Dominique Ropion did, and Dominique Ropion knows his white florals, Dominique Ropion is also one of the noses behind Pure Poison. Pure Poison is a gardenia fragrance, doesn't have tuberose in it, but original formulation, majestic white floral. Dominique Ropion delivered the white floral that he knows how to deliver with carnal flower. The name says it all. It's a carnal flower, but masterfully tame. This tuberose doesn't go in that tuberose criminelle direction into that indolic camphorous tuberose smell because he tamed it masterfully with a melony accord, a, a coconutty accord. So he kind of tamed it so that it's not criminal, but he made it he allowed it to be green enough, just enough to be carnal. So it's not criminal, but it's carnal. It doesn't let you go. Lasting power is beast. This tuberose sticks on me for days. And if I overdose it, I'll suffocate. One spray on my chest is enough for two days. And it keeps projecting and emanating this intoxicating, beautiful... deep... 
wet green tuberose. This is a very wet tuberose. It's a it's a humid and wet tuberose with some soil attached to the roots of the tuberose still. It's not just a flower. It almost feels like it has the roots as well in it. A masterpiece. A masterpiece. And you can, you can see I use it often, but look how little is gone. I mean, this is an eau de parfum, but the concentration really is of a pure extrait. It's very intense, majestic perfume. Uh, I highly recommend it. And it definitely deserves to be in the top 10 tuberoses of all time. Number 10. And I'm so glad that I can say this because it's beautiful to have, you know, begun in 1922 all the way this was our number one 22 is number one and then chronologically we're in the year 2022 by the way the year 2022 is also the hundredth birthday of number 22 so number 22 if it focuses is celebrating its 100th birthday this year so we're coming full circle we began this 10 top 10 tuberoses of all time or my top 10 tuberoses really uh, with a Chanel fragrance, and we're going to end with a Chanel fragrance that was released coincidentally this year, a hundred years after number 22, which is basically the only fragrance with tuberose that Chanel has. Chanel now releases another tuberose fragrance in 1922. Well, not a fragrance, but a concentration rather, and that would be Gabrielle Parfum. The extrait concentration of Gabrielle is released in 2022. So this is a brand new tuberose and I've been using it. This juice is expensive. It's a tiny bottle, but you know Chanel's Parfum concentrations cost a pretty penny. Check out my review of this one. I literally cried during the review. I mean this, you guys. And it's so beautiful how masterfully blended this one is. I'm not a big fan of the Eau de Parfum. The Essence is okay, the, the first two concentrations, but the Parfum is just right. They utilize uh, Tuberose Absolu from Grasse in this one. And as I said, number 22 is the only friendly Chanel perfume. This one comes close as well. It's a little bit colder than 22, also because 22 has that beautiful vanilla in there that rounds it up and makes it cocoony and warm. This one, however, the tuberose is, it, it's a solar tuberose. It's so sunny and inviting and um, crisp and clear. But it has a sharpness to it. You know, those aldehydes that Chanel is so famous for. And it has a crisp sharpness to it. I adore this perfume. Gabrielle Parfum. Really wonderful surprise. It came unexpected, really. They just released it without even announcing it. Well, at least I didn't know. And all of a sudden it was there. And boy, oh boy, is it gorgeous. This is the only concentration, really, of, of Gabrielle that I, that I can say. You know, of the other two concentrations of Gabrielle, I said, you know, it's an okay perfume, but it's not a Chanel. But this one is a Chanel perfume. This one, this is where it's at. It's a beautiful modern take on tuberose. It has ylang ylang in it. It has jasmine in it. But the tuberose in here, maybe thanks to the ylang ylang, is it has a buttery quality. It's full. It's dense. It's rich. This one doesn't have major projection. It doesn't have huge longevity. You know, all perfumes, all Chanel things at the moment are kind of very toned down. But you will smell it. It's, it stays close to the skin. And it's a very soothing, comforting, invigorating tuberose. It gives, in other words, hope. And what a wonderful way to end this journey in the present time. And you know, the times we live in, are there's not much hope, really. We're going through some tough times right now. And yet there's a perfume like this released in dark times. In the darkest of times, a solar light perfume is released it can't get much more poetic than that you guys it's a beautiful solar sunny tuberose 
So that would be my top 10, or those would be my top 10 tuberose fragrances. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section what your favorite uh, tuberoses are, if you have them. Some people don't like tuberose, and that's okay too. I'm a huge fan of tuberose, but it's not for everyone, I know. So, you guys, oh, thank you, Rich Mitch. Rich Mitch says, great list. Thank you. Yes, Prof Melvin. Uh, Gabriel Parfum, such a quiet release. I love that, though. I love that. You know. I love that. It's a great list, Jacob. Thank you, Nina. Nina. Thank you, Love DIY. Hi, Danny. Lo Thank you, Jacob. Thank you, too. Thank you so much. Prof Melvin says, a great, great list, Jacob. Thank you, guys. And until next time, subscribe to my channel and never give up on love. Bye.